Welcome back everyone. Cube's live coverage here in Google Next in San Francisco, Moscone. Um, the Cube here with John Furrier, me and Dustin Kirkland here, co-host of the Cube. We also have the Cube team coverage. Rob Shoshi, Lisa Martin here. Our next guest is Sarab Mishra, global head of Google Business for Quantify, a breakout company, multiple awards uh, here at the show. Obviously Google Cloud really expanding their ecosystem and you're starting to see a lot of winning companies popping out of the more cloud goodness. Sarab, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate your time. Thank you so much for inviting me. So before I get into um, the, your company and what you do there, also your role, I saw you got the partner of the year, I had to weave that in. You guys won multiple awards in multiple categories. Quickly uh, give the news on the awards. On the awards, uh, this year was phenomenal for us. Uh, we got four awards. Uh, the biggest one was around uh, winning Breakthrough Partner of the Year for North America. This was our second year in the row. We won the same award last year as well, so we're very excited about it. In addition to that one, we also got award for the expertise that we're building in the manufacturing domain, right? We saw a lot of good, uh, did a lot of good work with our customers in the manufacturing uh, industry last year, so we got that award. The next one was around marketing analytics, right? How can how can uh, customers of Google Cloud understand their customers better, right? So that was the other award. And the last one was around talent development, right? So we know Google, there is a lot of demand for Google, but there are not a lot of uh, practitioners. So we've been able to upskill our team and we have, at this point of time, more than one certification per person who focuses on Google Cloud. Well, so, congratulations on that breakout thing. Obviously, we've been saying on theCUBE, you know, at, let that data get free, let it be scalable, and the, really the industry verticals are all impacted. It's very clear, and, it's, and there's no really debate. Every single industry is impacted by AI. Take a minute to explain what your company does uh, and what your role is at the company. Sure, I can start by first my role and then I can get into a little bit more about the company as well. Uh, well. Like I said, my name is Saurabh, I lead Quantify's Google Cloud business globally that's focused on our Google Cloud partnership. Um, when I joined the company back in 2016, uh, one of the co-founders, Asif Hassan, and I started this partnership. Now the team of two people have grown to be a team of 2,200 people. Uh, spread across US, Canada, UK, India, and we recently expanded to Singapore as well. Now, talking a little bit about the company, uh, we are an award-winning AI-first digital engineering company. We've been premier partner with Google Cloud for seven years now. So, AI-first digital engineering company, that's, a, that's an interesting uh, string of words. What does that mean to you? And how does that fit into the whole ecosystem we have uh, around us here at this uh, Google Max? Sure, definitely. I'm happy to talk a little bit about that. Uh, so, part of the reason that you've not heard about this, because we believe we are defining this category where we are helping customers harness the power of data and AI on cloud. Okay. Machines today have ability to see things, hear things, understand language, and process patterns, right? Now using these powers of machine, we are solving for four classes of business problems for our customers. The first one is around solvage for knowledge and discovery. These are systems of search and retrieval built on large corpuses of data. Uh, think of this systems like ChatGPT and BARD, which we are all familiar with. So second class of problems that we're solving for is solving for experiences. Think about speech-based interfaces, gesture-based interfaces, conversational agents, right? We've all used virtual agents, we've done, spoken to voice bots, chat sure. bots, right? So these are the types of solutions we're building for our customers. Okay. The third one is around solving for automation, where we are helping our customers process documents using Google's Document AI, mm -hmm. uh, find anomalies in their manufacturing lines using visual quality inspection, right? Uh, the fourth one, we solving for simulation, where we are helping technology to generate synthetic data, uh, build digital twins, industrial metaverse, etc. Now these models, right, uh, to build these types of applications are neural nets which are very data hungry and compute hungry. Now for customers to be able to take advantage of these applied AI solutions that I just talked about, right, they need to modernize their data fabric and revamp their infrastructure to have GPUs and TPUs to be able to run these models at scale. Now this is our second side of the business where we are helping customers move their cloud infrastructure from on-prem 
to cloud sorry move their infrastructure from on prem to cloud uh, so that's one build security around it so these models are secure and are not having any sort of attacks the second one is around data modernization right where we are helping customers move their data from legacy systems like netiza teradata to google cloud yeah build intelligent data lakes in a way that they can basically take advantage of building these models the third one is around application modernization where we are helping customers take their legacy application and rewire them in a cloud native way so they can support the performance that the customers expect and the last one is around bi modernization where we are helping customers build dashboards using looker i want to get into how the role google cloud plays in the partnership obviously many years but i want to first on that first segment you went through there I wanted to ask, what's the drivers behind that transformation with your customers? Is it because they have an old legacy environment, we heard that in the keynote today, or is it because just their data is all over the place, or all of the above, what's the core? We got a lot of services. So what's the driver? Just modernization, what's the main pain points of your customers? Is there any pattern to the, to the problem, or is it more pretty wide? What's the, what's the driver? So I would say there, there are definitely a few themes, right? Uh, over the years, uh, a lot of our customers have built different systems, have acquired different data sources that are basically in silos, in disparate sections, right? Now, for us, for them to be able to build robust system, they need to be able to bring their data in, in a way that those data pieces can speak to each other, right? So we have a unified data record for us to be able to build intelligent systems on top of that. This is one of the very common themes that we are seeing with the customers that, that, we are, that are starting on their digital transformation journey. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is uh, the customers uh, who are already on cloud, uh, who are already uh, who are currently on the legacy systems, right? Those customers, for them to be able to harness the power of AI, yeah. right? they're starting to move to cloud, right? And then they, if you have, if your models are sitting on cloud, they would prefer yeah. to eventually move their data to cloud as well. So we are seeing a lot of these customers move their data from legacy systems to. Google Cloud, BigQuery, et cetera. So well, that, those I mean, are some of great, the patterns that we're seeing. Yeah, that's a great lead into the next question, which is around the Google Cloud collaboration. Where do you, uh, where do you utilize Google? How, how do your customers experience that? And, and you know, what problems does Google Cloud solve for you? That's actually a very good question. Uh, Google Cloud is actually a core to our business and it helps us in multitude of ways, right? So first of it, Google helps us provide scalable and reliable infrastructure so we can build solutions, the AI systems that I talked about, that are high performant and are basically giving customers what they need. Right? So that's the first, the foremost part of it. They're helping us with the infrastructure side of things. The second part being around data and AI services that they offer for partners like us to build these systems. Two of them that I'll mention is Vertex AI and BigQuery. Yep. Now these services provide us technologies that help us build these sophisticated models. Understand the, the large corpus of data and make meaning out of it. So that's the second part where Google is helping us with these uh, technologies, right? The third part is a, a large variety of pre-trained models, APIs, and developmental assets which are able to help us accelerate our journey to cloud. So this is how I believe Google fits into it. They've been instrumental to us. Great, great uh, partnership. And Google's obviously positioned well. Dustin used to work there, he's an ex-Googler. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> yeah, a lot of AI chops, obviously bringing that to the table, which we heard a lot of the executives that we've interviewed, they're bringing up the best of Google's jewels into the cloud, so that's cool, they're cloudifying it. And, but the big upside is the generative AI conversation. So, um, what, can you talk about uh, Quantify's um, view and role in contributing to this wave? Because developers love it, the, the, door, the boardroom loves it, loves it, the minds of business loves it, software loves AI, so what are the opportunities and challenges that you guys are pursuing uh, with generative AI? Sure, definitely. So uh, let me, let me uh, so state of AI has evolved significantly over decades, right? Now, uh, I'll go back to uh, the days of pre-TensorFlow, uh, which was open sourced by Google in 2015, right? AI was limited to uh, mostly structured data in rows and columns, and predominantly used for doing predictive analytics. 
with AI, uh, with TensorFlow, the new class of AI came across, which is around deep learning, which gave machines the ability to see things, hear things, understand language, right? Now, it's been five to seven years that TensorFlow was launched, but these models were still cumbersome and expensive, right? Because you had to develop a separate model for every cognitive task. Yep. With, uh, uh, with task, right? Now, building these models was cumbersome. Now, as the AI ecosystem evolved, with valuable con uh, contributions from open source, the art of the possible will AI expand it, yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, I still remember uh, getting our hands on Google's research paper around generative uh, network architecture. That was one of the big things that happened for the AI community, and we knew it back then. Yeah. It was right? obvious, the paper. Yeah, exactly, we knew it back then, right? Uh, that this is going to be revolutionary, and it's only a matter of time that gen the impact of generative AI will become real for customers. Yeah. And when, because you also mentioned, like, how does Google help in this journey? I would say is like TensorFlow was open sourced by Google. Yep. This research was published by Google, mm -hmm. and these two things have basically formed basis of how generative AI has happened over the years. Yeah, well, so the positive aspects, the, the possibilities are endless. What are some of the limitations and challenges uh, of you know, this technology from, from your seat, from where, where you see it? Thanks for bringing that question, right? Uh, so these generative AI, everybody's talking today in today's world about the hype of the possibility of what generative AI can do. But there are a lot of challenges and people who are leveraging this technology need to understand that and basically address those things and use this technology in a little bit of a responsible way. Now talking about some of the challenges that we are seeing, the first one is around accuracy. Now these models are trained on large corpuses of data and follow complex patterns. So they have a tendency to give erroneous results mm -hmm. or what we call hallucinations, right. right? So these answers may be good semantically, right. but when put into the context in which the question is being asked, yep. they may actually not be correct, and which is basically questioning the reliability of these generative yeah, I think all of us at this point have asked the AI an obvious question and gotten a straight-faced lie uh, to our face at this point, and it you know breaks a little bit of the trust that we have in it. So you know what are you doing about that? So uh, for this, uh, what we are doing is uh, we are basically, uh, we've been working on ethical principles of responsible AI. So the systems that we are building, we are ensuring they are free of bias, mm -hmm. uh, they, are, uh, they are fair, they are transparent and explainable, right? And they're secure and have privacy baked into it. So these generative AI models that we are developing for our customers are being used by them in a way that they are intended to do so. So these are some of the principles that we follow. There are like eight principles that we have uh, curated in our labs, uh, and that's what we are basically uh, doing. We've actually published a paper on that one as well. There's a huge skill gap too, uh, and depending on which age group you talk about, but also the younger generation are all over this. I mean, the startups in Silicon Valley alone uh, is like highly concentrated. There's more meetups than ever before. There's definitely excitement in the open source. So you're seeing a lot of action. What's percolating up in your view that you see from as AI starts to hit that first organic wave of adoption? Um, you're starting to see like Langchain out there and you got Google's got embeddings, I mean uh, inter, uh, integrations. There's kind of like an interesting formation going on. Will something have to emerge out of this wave before the big enterprises jump on it? Or, People are just going to ride their data on their way, or I mean, well, how do you guys see that adoption? Because we're seeing a lot of experimentation, not a lot of production, mostly integrated into an app, but not a lot of net new production yet. We expect it to be coming. So, uh, uh, from for this question, right? Actually, this is this is a good question because again, going back to the hype that the generative AI has created, we are having a lot of conversations. So, I will tell you in the last uh, four months. We've spoken to 300 plus customers who want to understand the possibility of generative AI, right? So what we are doing to help customers embark on this journey is, first, we build like a four step process for them. The first one is help them demystify this generative AI. What does it mean for them? And what does it mean for their industry? 
right? So that's the first part of it. Now, with our conversation that we've had with so many customers, we've been able to come up with some patterns of what customers are trying to solve for. The second one is basically doing the rapid prototyping, the, the, the thing that you mentioned about experimentation, right? Now, what we do is we work with these customers to first curate the use cases that can be solved for their industries because we want to make sure that they have the right data set to be able to solve the problem that they're looking to solve for. They have the right infrastructure to, to be able to do so. Now, once the prototype is successful, there comes the big part, which is what your main question was, right? How will you see this experiment go into adoption. Now, for this to happen, there have to be some considerations where we have a package for our customers where how do you take the prototype to production? We talk about the data considerations, we talk about the infrastructure considerations, we talk about the security considerations, which is very, very important. Uh, the, then the other two, which have become very, very important in context of generative AI is legal implications. And the last one is around change management, yeah. which, which people just normally end up missing about because yeah. these systems are going to fundamentally change how industries function. And all the process. There is going, yeah. there is going to be a lot of effort that yeah. needs to go on change yeah. management for these systems to totally. actually get adopted within the, within, the, within the enterprises. So very briefly, uh, can you tell us specifically what are your product offerings in the generative AI space? Sure. So today our generative AI offerings uh, revolve around integrating generative AI for domain specific tasks to enhance productivity for knowledge workers. At the forefront is our enterprise generative AI platform which we are calling as Bionic which is a combination of Bionic plus AI plus Quantify okay. and Bionic enables uh, enterprise to access and leverage fundamental models that, that are available in the market to be adapted for their own domain to solve wide variety of use cases. What's unique about this platform is that this enables customers to plug in their own data, instruction fine tune them for their own tasks that they are looking for to bring generative AI capabilities within this organization. In the true sense, what we believe, the Bionic is helping customers unleash the power of LLMs and do this in a safer way within their environment. Yeah. So that's basically our offering, uh, Bionic, and we're helping customers get onboarded on this journey. Well, sounds like great growth. Congratulations on all your success in the company. Um, again, the wave is just beginning. You, sounds like you guys built that big surfboard to ride the big wave, uh, big wave riding going on here with AI. As we close out, take a minute to explain and uh, the, 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 real, the quick story, the bumper sticker for the company, the value proposition, and then any advice you'd like to share to aspiring AI um, folks out there, uh, entrepreneurs, developers, companies, who want to jump in, jump in the deep end of the pool, start swimming fast. Uh, quick summary of your, your pitch, bumper sticker. Sure, definitely. And so I can, I can talk about, so we've been focused a lot on talking to the executives and leaders, so I can talk about what leaders need to think about in terms of what's happening to take the advantage of this opportunity. The first and foremost thing is to accept and realize that there is a paradigm shift in AI with generative AI. We are not going to be any more training one model for a task. There will be a foundational model that will help enable a lot of tasks, right? This will require different types of skills and engineering capabilities and customers will have to invest in upskilling their team. So that's the first part of it. The second part of it is basically understanding within their value chain. Where do they see the maximum value, maximum ROI or maximum impact of generative AI and start focusing on them? And the last one I would say is to find a champion within their organization because any big thing like generative AI applications will need a champion within the organization to move it forward and that's going to be a very, very important feature. It won't be hard to find a champion in the companies. Anyone who's got <laughs> tech chops go all over AI. I mean, I wish I was 25 again, Dustin. I mean, we are, we love it. I mean, AI is the fountain of youth. Yeah. You know, it's really exciting. Yes, definitely, for sure. Like, we are very excited about <laughs> what the world is going to look like in the next three years and five years, how industries are going to adopt technology and have a new way of working. 
So Rob, thanks for coming on theCUBE. You know, we're Chile's AI, we love AI, we're maximalists on this. We think it's going to be game change. We're seeing here already at Google Next, and we're looking forward to checking in with you guys later and, and, and hear what you're hearing from your customers. We'll come back on theCUBE another time and we'll check in with you. Thanks sure, for definitely. coming on. Thank you for inviting us and we look forward to the conversation again. All right, good job, well done. CUBE here live, get all the data, laying all the frameworks, there's best practices, there's new ways of doing things. This is a way that's going to change new values, going to create process change, create opportunities for entrepreneurs and innovators to navigate the complexity of the legal and compliance. That's going to be done very easy. It's going to be done in a wave like this. AI's here to stay. We got the coverage here in theCUBE. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back.